see them? What's that? Is that on? Hello, 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 are they on? Yes, oh good. We're going to shock her anything, will they? That's it. Oh, take the water away, you silly arse. I don't want to drink that stuff. Now then, settle down, gentlemen. Come along, settle down, sir. There's a good fellow. The time, summer. The place, Lord Charles's country home. The occasion, a press conference. Now then, you newspaper chappies know why I've sent for you. We're living in a tourist paradise here. I say, that's charming, isn't it? And I want everyone to know about it. We plan to leave at 10.30 a.m. Now then, take this down, will you? We are going to explore this, this other region. Yes, this semi-detached paradise. This shallow plot. This land. Oh, there's evergreen allotment where lies nurtured, uh, nurtured, uh, and uh, where every man jack is free. This dear, dear land, this England. We left at 4.30 p.m. weeks in Britain, and if you've forgotten to turn the oven off, there's nothing you can do about it, except luxuriate in the thought of 28 work-free days to shop, to look, to eat, to drink, to ride, to fish, and perhaps solve the enigma of how much three guineas is in this incomparably green country. Are you receiving me, my lord? Well, what the devil is that? There's an idiot talking. That's Cavendish, our chauffeur. A traveller new to this ancient county, might ask just what it is these quiet people understand. Oh, is this fellow going to keep butting in all day? Well, you can always turn him off, you know, just push the button. After a while... For long centuries, the land has grown richer, its beauty has ripened, and its wisdom has distilled slowly, like a good brew in the cask. I must say that Romans did a jolly good job on these roads. Cavendish certainly knew his Britain, a mine of information. And in this hospitable land, you, the stranger, will soon find yourself in tune with its rhythm, absorbing its essence. Oh, it's like being on the Sharadang tour. Four weeks in Britain. And if you've forgotten to turn the oven off, there's nothing you can do about it, except luxuriate in the... Shut up, Cavendish! Damn you! An appreciative little twit. But where to start? London? The capital? Let's start in a quiet, unspoiled town in the heart of the countryside. A town which has been the seat of this nation's learning for something like seven centuries. Cambridge. The scene of Lord Charles's early triumphs. Ah, oh, my goodness, what a little darling she was. Oh. One times eight is eight. One times eight is eight. 
From every college in the university, you'll see black gown students converge on the Senate House like starlings gathering for migration. By Jove, it's all coming back to me now. I turned out regularly for the first 11, you know. Yes. Never played, but I always turned out. The banks, where six colleges flank the River Cam, are like a jewel set in the gold of a city. A place of loveliness, as well as learning. And the learning is easier because of the loveliness. This university produced Frank Whittle, the father of the jet engine, Henry Cavendish, after whom the laboratory was named, and Lord Kelvin, who revolutionized the mariner's compass. And you there, what will you be? Perhaps you will design spaceships, or write greater plays than Bernard Shaw, or find a cure for the common cold, or merely catch the 815 to the office every morning. Right now, all you're worried about is that she hasn't written to you. Cheer up, she didn't write to Henry Cavendish or Lord Kelvin either. Oh, that fellow never stops talking. Anyone would think this was a travel log. Hold it. That night, we camped out. Can't it? The natives are restless tonight. Keep the fire banks and your eyes skinned or we may never see another dawn. My <laughs> dove. Dawn. Cavendish? Thank you, sir. Another dawn. Another day of golden promise flickering through the foliage. A moment and a mood of tranquility. unchanged and unchanging, reflected in the stillness of the early morning hours. How remote the big city turmoil can seem in many of the villages. I do wish you'd shut up, Cavendish. You've been at it all night. Rush hour here merely means the milkman and paperboy are on their rounds, such as the calm predictability of life. Yet the rewards of open-air living are etched in the features of its people. Fishermen, farmers, whatever they might be. Hey, well, hey, where are the devil? What the devil's going on? And where's my breakfast? Coming, sir. There's always a peace and a seclusion to be found somewhere, sometime beckoning the visitor to share the unhurried pace and charm which this corner of England has to offer. And then, gentlefolk, we made haste to Newmarket. Enjoy, my lord, the thoroughbreds as they flex their expensive limbs. Dawn now is the sound of horses' hooves on turf and stable yards at Newmarket, where you feel the very heart of the English racing scene. By Joe Gigi's. His lordship had other things in mind. I say, have you any loose change on you, Cavendish? But Cavendish threw him off the scent. My lord, a new day emerges with glowing importance, echoing with early morning activity and anticipation. Dawn melts into morning sunshine. Why, Joe, what a lovely little mover! The Norfolk Broads. But first, dally a while at Burnham Thorpe. Testing. One, two, three. Norfolk, the county of contrasts. Still unspoilt enough to attract fishermen to its lakes and rivers, and ornithologists to the lonely coastal sanctuaries that are teeming with bird life. And away from the fun-loving resorts, there are countless villages offering links with the past. 
This is Burnham Thorpe, my lord. There's a signpost to history in the name above the village stores. That's a reminder that so much of the Norfolk seafaring tradition stemmed from the man who was born here, Lord Nelson. Oh, Lord Nelson, now there's one of England's finest sons. It was a great seafaring family, you know. I know they still talk of one of my ancestors, tough as a ship's biscuit, built like a bulldog, scourge of the Spanish main, magnificent woman. <laughs> more evidence of the everlasting Nelson touch should anyone need than to cruise through the lazy maze of waterways, the Norfolk Broads. Hours drift by. Time appears to have an endless unimportance. Not to his lordship when it's near lunchtime. The air here puts an edge on one's appetite. What? I think I should begin with some freshly caught lobster salad, followed by a freshly caught chicken, followed by anything out of season. Come to that, I wouldn't mind a boar's head. Cavendish with an apple in his mouth. <laughs> I assume all these refreshments are down to you, Cavendish, aren't they? Yes, they are. More chips, my lord. Or could I tempt you with another, as they say in the vernacular, banger? Hardly caught on blur, is it? And what's this pot of varnish? Tea, my lord. Forward to Chatsworth. which all of us can now enjoy. One of England's most stately of stately of stately homes and most gracious of most gracious gardens. Chatsworth, my lord. Known as the Palace of the Peak. One of the most sumptuous of all the great houses of the North. And open for anyone to visit. You mean he lets the rebel in? made a further insult, and a slight contretemps ensued. Take that, you peak cat peasant! Time now for an interlude. <laughs> the 
interlude continues. The continued interlude continues. Well, his lordship and Cavendish had buried the hatchet. And so we headed uh, north. The north of England, too, has its off-the-track places and its off-the-track jobs. Year in, year out, Rose Farrow, the shepherdess of Hutton the Hole, comes down to take the sheep up to the moors. What about some coffee, Cavendish? The machine's out of milk, my lord. Who there, peasant? Too late. These are the wild, haunted moors of the Wuthering Heights, of which Emily Bronte wrote. I believe you saw part of the film, my lord. Two of them are alike, and no one river is the same from one meander, one meander, one meander, Hit one him meander, with something. one meander, to the next. Can I draw your attention, my lord, to these falls at high force in the Pennines? The roof of England, where the young river Tees tumbles down on its long journey to the North Sea. is an ornithologist's paradise, crammed with nesting seabirds, some exotic like the puffin or the razorbill, dumpy like the guillemot or guimo, or lean like the black shag. I believe that's a black shag there, my lord. <coughs> there are petrol and kittiwake, terns who find their way from South Africa, 4,000 unerring miles. Unerring? Yes, I think I'll stay in the car, Cavendish. <laughs> 